Hello, I'm Daniel, and welcome to the Imuna Project. We here at the Imuna Project are continuing in our series of videos with respect to information, education, uh, guidance, inspiration, advice, and I'm um, thinking of Rabbi Levi Yitzhak of Berdyshev. And it happened uh, one year on Yom Kippur in his shul in Berdyshev. Now, there was a certain woman, a certain old woman, who every year would come to Berdyshev, to his shul, to daven Yom Kippur, to pray the Yom Kippur service with Rabbi Levi Yitzhak, every year without fail. One year, she's late. By the time she gets to the shul of the Rabbi Levi Yitzhak's uh, synagogue in Berdyshev, she figured, okay, for sure, evening prayers are over. I've missed it. I've missed everything. And she was just despondent. But she tries the door and it was open. And she walks in and there's Rabbi Levi Yitzhak and his entire congregation, the shul was full. They had not even begun. Rabbi Levi Yitzhak waited for that one woman to show up because he knew she was going to come and he waited for her and every member of the congregation sat there and waited they were astounded when she finally she came in this woman was overcome when she clued in what was happening and that they hadn't started and they had waited specifically for her she was filled with a great joy and she cried out to God, Master of the universe, what shall I wish you in return for the good that you have given me, for the kindness and for the joy that you have given me? I wish you in return for the good you have vouched me. I wish that you have as much joy of your children as you have just granted me. And with that, she blessed Rabbi uh, Levi Yitzhak of Berdyshev and the entire congregation who sat and waited for one poor old woman to, to make it to Shul. This Ahavis Yisroel, this love of the Jewish people, this love of, uh, of your fellow man, is something that's demonstrated so often. I will give you a personal, a personal uh, story. This just happened a few uh, days ago uh, on Purim. I was working, and there's a mitzvah that you should hear the Megillah reading on uh, the night of Purim. I was working. I couldn't get out. By the time I finished, it was 1.30 in the morning. And it's 1.30 in the morning. There was all the McGill readings, the reading of the Scroll of Esther, which I was obligated to hear at night, as well as the day. I couldn't get away. And I was very upset. And um, I was speaking with Rabbi Haber at the time. He says, you can't just... Give it a miss. You got, you got to do something. You got to try. You can't just go home. I called the Chabad rabbi in a nearby town. And I said, it's 1.30. I'm just getting off work. I haven't heard the Megillah reading. I haven't heard anyone recite the Scroll of Esther. There's no synagogue in this area. I just, I don't know what to do. Immediately, without skipping a beat, without hesitating a second, he says, come to my home. I says, I may not get there until after 2 o'clock in the morning. He says, phone me five minutes before you arrive. Come to my home. I arrived there about 10 after 2 in the morning. He was waiting for me at the dining room table. And I came in. I tried to be as quiet as I could because I knew his family was asleep. And we sat there at the dining room table. And he, he asked me to do 
the blessings, the brachas, uh, before uh, the Megillah reading, which I did. Then he re read uh, the whole scroll of Esther, as I sat and watched and followed along in, uh, in my sitter. I said the after bracha. By the time we finished, it was probably I don't know, 20 to 3, I thanked him profusely. And as I was driving home, you know, almost 3 o'clock in the morning, I was overcome. And I got an understanding of this poor old woman who got to Rabbi Levi Yitzhak of Berdashev's shul and realized that everyone was waiting for her. And because they knew she would come, late though she may be, and they waited for her. And Baruch Hashem, for people with such a love of the Jewish people, with such a love of their fellow man, that they will go that extra mile, that they would inconvenience themselves in order to help someone do a mitzvah, to do a commandment, to fulfill uh, an obligation to God. Um, we're going to be doing more videos along these lines. Please come back. Please watch. Please learn. I hope you find these stories in my own humble little example uh, of some in inspiration. And uh, until next time, on behalf of the Imuna Project, I'm Daniel, and thank you too much.